hello there everyone and welcome to this little Halloween special. We are working in Rooms of Wonder today and I found this little page with a whole lot of little wizardy kind of pictures on it. So I thought we'd tackle that one for today. So today I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell Polychromos as well as my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura and I'll be using pretty much the same colors for each of them. So you can use one or the other if you want to. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get our wizard hats on and we're going to write down a little recipe and then brew it up in our teapot. First of all, I'm going to just prep a little bit because I want to do a background. So I'm just lining up. I couldn't find my uh, ruler, so I'm just putting a little piece of paper down here. I've got a really light pencil and it's just the sky blue there. And I'm just making like a tiny little, a very, very light line just because I want to make it into shelves. Now I've seen a very similar design by Black Aneri on Instagram. She did something very similar in the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly book. However, her pencils are very different to mine. I think if I remember right, she used something like, I think that it was Castle Arts and I think possibly Goldfarber by Faber-Castell. So she, uh, she does not have, use the same pencils as me and she doesn't always write down which pencil she uses. So I've kind of had to just do a bit of a wild guess and sometimes do some substitutions here. So I'm not trying to uh, do exactly the same as hers. I've sort of had to look at the picture and take an inspiration from that and then we'll do our own thing. So I'm just going to start now with this little wizard hat in the middle. And this, actually, this little um, tutorial, I'll be doing all three of the elements up the top, the top row. However, this is one of the ones that if you have minimal time, you could just do one or two and do the other one at, at a later time if you want. Or you could do all three of them and then just skip the background altogether. So it's a very good one to do if you're a bit short of time because you can just pick a couple of them if you want to and just do a couple of elements so hopefully you're having fun you're ready for some Halloween to coloring intercourse so well we've already started so I can't say let's get started but let's keep going
While this deep cobalt green will be my main colour for this little witch's hat, I will be using a few different shades of blue as well as some other turquoise and cobalt tones as well. And I'm thinking of using some, maybe some pinky tones for the feather and that little band around the hat. I think that might look a bit different and a bit cool as well.
hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you want to bring a little bit of magic to someone else who might not have seen this video before, make sure you hit that like button as it does help push this video out to people who might like to see it just like you. And if you're new here and you'd like to be updated when I post some more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help me keep this magic going. So for the base layer, for the little sort of tie belt, whatever you can call it, that goes around the hat there, I'm going to be using light magenta as my base tone. I'm also thinking of possibly bringing in some blue violet for the shadows as well.
shadows for this one I will be using my dark indigo it will blend in really beautifully with this deep cobalt green and it's not so harsh as if I'm using black belt buckle on the hat I decided to bring out my silver color I don't think I've actually ever used this before it is I'm just finding it's a little tiny a little bit more crumbly than most of the other pencils but it's all right and I'm also going to go in and use just a slightly darker shade of gray just to create a little bit of depth on that buckle pretty much there now when it comes to this hat 
So I'm going to be going on to the left there and I'm going to do the little feather quill in the little ink pot. This little picture here I want to use some blue and violet tones however I thought I might bring in a little bit of red just to blend it in a little bit with the violet I thought it might just it will warm it up just that little bit and I think it's gonna make it a little bit more interesting than just using these cool colors
this little picture I'll just sort of be working on building up these sort of light and dark areas enough making sure that this sort of red tone as well sort of shines through a little bit so it's not super cold with all of the obviously the violets and the blues they're very cool tones so I thought with this little red it just brings something a little more interesting to this little ink pot I've also decided to go ahead and use similar colors on the feather as well I did unfortunately manage to run out of sort of my recording time on my camera there so I'm just going to tell you quickly what I did with the feather so I kind of did exactly the same as what I'm doing with the ink pot now I started with the sky blue and then started using the violet and the red tones and some blues for the shaded areas so you'll see right now sort of where this all goes so you can see that I've had there's a little bit of blue underneath it is hard to see it is very very this sky blue very very light layer and then I went over with the violet you can see I brought in the red tones there especially on the underside where I'm using a little bit darker colors and I'm using my um, indigo my dark indigo there especially underneath to create a fair bit of shadows I'm using my Derwent drawing Chinese white just to give it a little bit of a blend out especially sort of these lighter areas it will just sort of give sort of smush out those lighter areas a little bit more and remove well it's kind of doesn't sound right that a white pencil will remove the white areas but it kind of does it kind of removes that sort of white some of that white tooth that tends to shine through a little bit by smushing the lighter layers in so they cover a little bit better and then it gives me a nice little nice surface that I can then start layering my colors back on top and that makes it like really a whole lot brighter when I'm going over there with that second layer <music>
now with my Sakura Jelly Roll Zero 5 and I'll be removing some of these sort of black lines especially this little center part here I'm going over the top line of that I'm trying as much as I can to leave that bottom black line of it because that's sort of where, where I want the shadow to start but I am removing that top one because I want that little bit of highlight and make it look like that little I don't know, is it called a stem? <laughs> that, that main part of the feather with all those where everything kind of attaches from if that makes sense, you know what I mean anyway I wanted to make sure that that looks like it's sort of poking out a little bit and it's standing out a bit further than the rest so I'm just making sure that I'm adding my shadows underneath and having it lighter on top
it's time to start brewing a little potion so I'm gonna start out with light magenta as a base layer for all three of these so both the cups and the little pot and I'm also thinking I'm going in with the light red violet as well so I'll probably be using a few more of those sort of magenta tones in there and then maybe some of the blue tones for the shadowy areas <laughs>
like the moon and stars on these little mugs are standing out a little bit more so I'm trying to add in a little bit of shadow sort of on the underside of each thing so that's on the underside of that top part of the moon and underneath the moon as well as also these little sort of shadowy parts this mauve color is great for shading when we're using these sort of magenta tones I think I reckon it works a treat and I think it's going to look really nice with the background that I have in mind as well
So for these little leaves that are inside this pot, I've decided to go in very similar tones really to the colours of the potion, more so because I want it to look like the potion has taken on the colour of the leaves. I will be going in there afterwards with the Sakura Jelly Roll, I think, and just removing some of these outlines and that way these leaves will sort of almost completely blend in and camouflage into that little background there.
going to finish up with the shadows on these little cups and then I'm going to get started on the background now. If you decide not to put a background on there, you can go ahead and colour in a little bit on that steam that's coming out of the cups. I'd probably go in maybe like a light magenta colour and maybe some cream tones in there. I'll gonna, I'm going to do some, probably some Posca details on that once I've got the background on. But anyway, this is what it's looking like at the moment. So if you decide not to do a background, this is where we're up to and you can stop right there. But I want to do a background, so we're going to do some really cool sort of shallowings on the background. So I'm going to be using my Albrecht Dura watercolor pencils. I do have the 24 set, however, I have been supplementing these with some open stock pencils. And I actually went out today and bought a few more so that I had similar colors to the ones that I've just been using with my polychromos as well because I want that background to sort of complement what we already have. So those little very light lines that I did earlier now with the sky blue, I'm now going over that with this Prussian blue and obviously I'll be activating this out afterwards. So I want that area exactly where that line is to be like my darkest sort of a line directly behind my thing so I want it to look like they're sitting on a shelf so when you do draw up this line if you haven't done so already just make sure that you draw it up so that the line goes just sort of behind the cups on that right hand side don't have it going right sort of underneath the bottom of the cups you want it just above above that bottom level of the cups that way it looks like they're sitting on the shelf rather than sort of be squashed up against the wall and they look more 3d rather than 2d now in addition to having my dark areas on these lines that i created before i'm also going to be putting these darker blues up in each corner of the page so both sides as well as a little bit up sort of along the very top of the paper as well. I want the lighter areas to be on the wall directly behind each object.
got all my colors down now I'm now going to be using my Pentel water brush I'm using my small one today for those that follow me for a while you know that I usually tend to use my larger one but I think it's I think I have it in my bag or something because sometimes you know I just bring these random things along in the car and things so I just couldn't be bothered going and trying to find it. So I'm just using this smaller one. I do find that this one releases a little bit more water. So I've got a paper towel just off the side of the camera there. So you can see me constantly wiping off my paintbrush. So I've started sort of in the lighter areas and I'm working my way over to these dark areas where I laid down a little bit more pigment. That way I get these lighter areas and now I'm getting these sort of darker ones where I want them without bringing all that dark colour into my lighter areas.
this dries I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more pigment to sort of the bottom of the shelf so the well what do you call it the floor of it the actual shelf shelf really where the our little items are standing on so that's where I'm going at the moment I'm just adding a little bit of light magenta there and then obviously I'll blend that out afterwards I've put a little bit of darker area just underneath a little ink pot and then I am blending that out a little bit lighter to either side When the top part there has dried you can go ahead and then add a little bit more color if you want to or if you're happy with how yours is looking you can just leave it as well don't worry if it's a little bit sort of patchy like the one like what it is at the moment it actually looks really cool it makes it look like it's sort of different lights hitting it and there's all these sort of magic I think you actually make it look a little bit more magical really but I just want to add a little bit more dark blue so I'm using the indenthrine blue just up in the corner there and just sort of where I want a little bit of darker areas I won't go too much over the rest of it maybe add a little bit more of that light magenta and some of that light cobalt turquoise but we'll see where we're going with this <laughs>
one of the other great things you can do with these watercolor pencils is that you can sort of bring it in a little bit and then you can go ahead and use a little bit of paper towel and then use that to remove a little bit of the pigment so that way you can still just like I'm doing now I'm kind of dabbing it off a little bit so you still get some of that pigment down but you still keep it really nice and light where you want those lighter highlights so I'm just sort of going in there I'm blending it down and then I'm removing sort of just above the level of that feather and you can do that all over the behind the other areas as well like the the witch's hat and our little teapot and things so just depending on what you like so just use a little bit of excess water and just blend it down a little bit and then remove some of that pigment to create that sort of patchy white area behind it
the right hand side I'm doing exactly the same as I did on the other side I'm just going to go in a little bit extra dark I've just decided to go straight in with the indanthrine blue straight away just to really darken it up and then I'll add my helium blue reddish I reckon and the um, Prussian blue just on top of that and blend that in going lighter of course in behind our little magical items on the shelves.
once that layer is dry again I'm going to go back in and just add some more layers I'm just going to finish off activating down the bottom here and then I'll go back up the top and add some more color I'm just sort of thinking all I want to do now really if like if you're happy at this point again as I mentioned before just leave it but if you want to build up a little bit more contrast between your lights and your darks then you can go ahead and add a little bit more color Just add some little white details I'm just using a bit of Posca here adding some whites if you're finding it's too light in the background you can go in with either some more Albrecht Dura pencil or you can even go in very lightly with some layers of polychromos and just darken up the area behind if you want to I think I'm not just leave it the way it is right now and then once I've got all of these little steam bits and pieces done, I'm just going to keep adding some sort of random little dots to the background there, all the way across. And uh, it just sort of, I just find it breaks it up a little bit and it makes it look like there's some little things floating around and just adds a little bit of extra magic, I think. Oh. 
So as you can see, I just want a little bit more color just behind where that sort of steam is coming up, just to kind of make the steam a little bit more visible. So I'm just going in with a very, very light layer of Albrechtura Violet just sort of on either side of that steam.
just finishing up now with these little white dots making sure I got them sort of evenly spread out I just added a couple of little lines to that little ink pot as you can see and here we go this is the final result with the proper color saturation on there so I'll just show you each little element there and then I'll show you all of them together I am really happy with how this turned out as I said at the start I did take inspiration from a picture by Black and Airy that she did from Ivy and the Inky Butterflies so credit to her I did as I mentioned have to find out the colors by myself because she uses different pencils to me but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think I think my vision kind of came to life here I hope you've enjoyed following along with me today I wish you guys all a very happy Halloween have fun eat some sweets and lollies and candies or whatever you call it where you're coming from and I will see you again next time.